Hey there, America. It's time to talk about something we all love to ignore. Our country's finances. Think of it like your personal bank account, but instead of late fees for missing a Netflix payment, it's the potential collapse of the global economy. No pressure. Every year, the US government goes through a familiar routine, figuring out how much money it has, how much it's going to spend, and how much it's going to borrow to cover the difference. Spoiler alert, we've been borrowing a lot, like a lot, a lot. Fiscal year 2023 was no different. We're talking trillions of dollars in revenue, trillions more in spending, and a national debt that would make even the most reckless gambler sweat. Buckle up, folks, because we're about to dive headfirst into the wild world of US fiscal policy. Let's start with the elephant in the room, or rather the giant debt-shaped monster hiding under America's metaphorical bed, the national debt. This is the total amount of money that the US government owes to individuals, businesses, and other countries. And guess what? It's huge. We're talking tens of trillions of dollars. A number so big, it's practically meaningless to the average person. Think of it this way. If you stacked that much money in dollar bills, it would reach the moon and back multiple times. Now, some debt is normal. Even responsible people take out loans for things like houses or education. But when your debt starts to spiral out of control, that's when you've got a problem. And let's just say America's credit card bill is looking a little scary these days. Okay, so we know the US spends a mind-boggling amount of money. But where does all that cash come from? Well, Uncle Sam has a few tricks up his sleeve. The biggest source of revenue for the federal government is taxes. That's right, all those paychecks you diligently send to the IRS actually go towards keeping the country running. We're talking income taxes, payroll taxes, corporate taxes, you name it, the government probably taxes it. But taxes alone aren't enough to cover our national spending spree. The government also generates revenue from things like tariffs, fees and investments. Think of it like Uncle Sam's side hustle, except instead of driving for Uber, he's collecting tolls on the information superhighway. Section 4. Spending spree, mandatory, discretionary, and the lights on fund. Now for the fun part, spending. The United States government spends money on a lot of things, from defense and healthcare to education and infrastructure. And just like your own budget, government spending can be divided into different categories. First up, we have mandatory spending, which includes programs like Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. These programs are funded by law, meaning Congress can't just decide to cut them off willy-nilly, though they can definitely try. Then there's discretionary spending, which covers everything from national defense and education to scientific research and foreign aid. Uh, this is the part of the budget that Congress actually has some control over, though it often feels like they're playing budgetary Jenga with the nation's future. And finally, we have the Keep the Lights On Fund, which covers the basic costs of running the government, like paying federal employees and maintaining government buildings, because even Uncle Sam needs to pay his electricity bill. Section 5, Deficit Disorder, when we spend more than we have. Remember that whole borrowing money thing we talked about earlier? Well, that happens when the government spends more money than it takes in through revenue. This is called a budget deficit, and it's kind of like overspending on your credit card, only on a much larger scale. Now, a small deficit isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when deficits become the norm year after year, it can lead to some serious problems. For one thing, it means the national debt keeps growing, which can lead to higher interest payments down the line. It can also make it harder for the government to respond to unexpected crises, like a global pandemic or a sudden economic downturn. Basically, running a deficit is like kicking the can down the road. It might feel good in the short term, but eventually someone's going to trip over that can and face the consequences. Section six, the bottom line, are we screwed? So there you have it, a crash course in the United States fiscal situation. It's a complex issue with no easy answers. But by understanding the basics of government revenue, spending and debt, we can start to have more informed conversations about our nation's financial future. The good news is it's not all doom and gloom. There are things we can do to address our fiscal challenges, from reforming our tax code to making smarter spending choices. But it's going to take a collective effort from our elected officials and everyday citizens alike. 
After all, this is America's checking account we're talking about, and whether we like it or not, we're all shareholders in this grand experiment called democracy. So let's try not to bankrupt ourselves, shall we?